Oh, come on. How beautiful is that, church? Come on. Hey, a big good morning from us to you. We are so glad to see you here. Excited to be in church. Anybody glad to be in church on a Sunday morning? Come on. It's good to be in church. It's a long weekend and you're in the house of God. Come on. I think that says a lot about you. We're glad that you're here. And uh, last week was beautiful. Baptisms were amazing. Yeah, I love seeing uh, those stories because yeah. it's just, you know, sometimes we hear baptisms and we go, yeah, we get excited for someone. But really getting to see what that means to someone, yeah, absolutely. it's just so special, right? If you've ever gotten baptized, you understand that feeling. Like I really, like I, I think back of when I made that decision in my life and really looking back, it's always so special to think how God can change your life. And in a moment so significant, you really feel like, the old you has gone away, it's disappeared, it's yeah. dead, and now there's a new person. So I love that as a church we get these opportunities, and it's beautiful to yeah, see absolutely. lives being changed. One more time, can we give a hand to everybody that made that decision last week and got baptized? It was beautiful. Hey, really quick, we want to welcome everybody watching across all of our locations, across our online church, online community. People are gathering and watching every single week. More in number, it's increasing. Can we do a big, big welcome to every single person? Come on, can we welcome them a big, big welcome? We love you. We're glad you're watching, whether you're in one of our locations or whether you're at home, at work, and you're watching. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're tuned in. And maybe you're watching or you're here and you're saying, what's going on today? There's a sofa. Uh, there's a table. What is going on today? We wanted to create a little bit of a more relaxed atmosphere, uh, kind of just hanging out because we want to have a conversation. Um, last week, we started a new series called Complicated. Somebody say Complicated. And Complicated is a series all about relationships because how many know relationships can get complicated? Yeah. Anybody know that? Yes. Some of you don't want to say amen because I know the, that special someone is next to you. But, but you know, relationships can easily get complicated. And last week we talked about, uh, if we're going to talk about the complications in our relationships, whether you're single, whether you're dating, or you're married, uh, there is going to be some complications. Before we try to figure those out, we said we should figure out the complications in us. And we shared a message last, last week called, It Starts With Me. Because uh, if we want a healthy us, it first begins with a healthy me. And I think we talked about checking our baggage, make sure that you're practicing self-care, self-love, making sure that you're okay emotionally, spiritually, mentally. I think you need to take care of yourself. Seek some help, right? Get some leadership around you, whether that's therapy, pastoral counseling, get in a connect group. Make sure that you're healthy so that you can offer your partner the best version of you. Come on, anybody believe that? And I think that's really going to help our relationships. Yeah, and that's the base, I think, that we were talking about, just kind of like the, the basic foundation. But there are so many other things that can make our relationships a little bit complicated, right? Uh, differences in opinions, just some different things. So today we actually want to focus on one of those things, which um, uh, expectations. How many of you know that expectations can be great, but expectations can also make uh, your relationships just a little bit complicated when your expectations are a little bit different than my expectations, right? So what do we do? when we're expecting different things. What do we do when I have expectations and you don't know about those expectations or you have them, I have no clue about them. So today, um, we wanna talk about those things. What do we do uh, with our expectations? How do we have healthy expectations in our relationships? Yeah, so let's do something. Grab your Bibles, go to the book of Colossians. Go to the book of Colossians. We're gonna read a little bit of scripture before we begin and see what the Bible tells us about relationships. I hope you had an incredible weekend. It, Valentine's Day weekend. Come on, I hope you went out on a nice date, whether you're single, dating, or married. I hope you went out somewhere, even if it was Chili's, like Phil said. Chili's Wherever you went, great. I hope I you had a good time. Yeah, even if I you're single, Chili's. I hope you had a date with Jesus and uh, enjoyed a good time together and loved yourself. Come on, you can love yourself and take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. Uh, but all the married couples make some noise. Come on. Uh, all the dating people make some noise. <laughs> all the single people make some noise. Come on. <laughs> Look at the person next to you and tell them, I'm so glad that you're sitting next to me. Come on. Across every location. Look at the person on the opposite side and tell them, uh, we're going to make things less complicated, baby. We're going to make things less complicated. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Let's read scripture. Colossians chapter 3. Paul is talking to us here, and we're going to read just two verses. Go with us to verse 12. If you're there, can you shout amen? amen. 
It says this, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievances against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Anybody say amen to that? And over all these virtues, put on love. Somebody say love. love. Put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. In perfect unity. Today, part two of our complicated series all across different locations, across everybody watching, wherever you're at. We want to continue this conversation. Me and Dad, I just want to share together as we all learn together. I hope you're taking notes. I hope all of us can leave uh, better today with our relationships a little bit healthier and stronger. Today, we want to share a message that we've titled, What Do You Expect? What do you expect? Look at three people around you and tell them, what do you expect? Come on, what do you expect? Look at your husband, look at your wife, tell them, what do you expect? Make it really weird, really awkward. As you wait for that. No, I'm just kidding. What do you expect? Let's pray. And uh, today we're just going to have more of a little bit of a conversation. We're just going to give you some handles, some of the things around expectations and goals as we talk about relationships. Let's pray. If you're with that special someone, grab their hand, squeeze it, tell them you love them. Father, we thank you. We love you for your goodness, for your grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for an incredible weekend. Thank you for a good day in spite of the rain. You're good, and your presence is here, and it's so good to gather in church. Even on a long weekend, we make time. We come and we gather together, whether it's in church or around a computer screen, and we make sure we're tuned in to what you want to say to us. God, help us to grow and learn in relationships. As you love us, help us to love others. In Jesus' name, all of God's people say. Amen. One more time, all of God's people say. Come on, across every location, make some noise for Jesus. Come on, with all we got. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, what we just read, I think um, Paul is giving us an example, and he's giving us guidelines as to how we should live this Christian life. He's talking about relationships because relationships can get complicated. Relationships, whether it's friendships or romantic relationships, whether you're married, dating, single relationships, you can all of a sudden have a little bit of friction and tension, and you can get upset, and attitudes can come out. <laughs> come on, how many know tempers Never. can flare? Words can be said. Can I get an amen? amen. I know you want to act holy and pretty and act like everything's okay, but how many know there could be problems in relationships? Paul, he's giving us a way that we should live this life. He's saying, hey, do it with kindness, compassionate. Be like Alex. Uh, be kind. Be compassionate. A little bit more kind like Diana. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's giving us all these details on how we should live this life because now we are in Jesus. And once you belong to Jesus, once you become a follower of Jesus, it should dictate now the way you treat people. How do we treat one another? How do we treat our friends? How do we treat that person that we are dating? How do we treat our spouses? And so he's about to talk about relationships. If you continue to read chapter 3, but, but those first two verses, he's telling us how we should live. And I think it, it's easy to say it, right? It's easy to say, hey, treat each other with love, with kindness, with compassion until you're in it and until differences come up. And one of the things that brings up the most differences as we were having this conversation and getting ready for this series, we said one of the things that brings up the most differences is when there is unhealthy expectations. When we're on different sides of the game, oh, it's easy for attitudes to come out. It's easy for tempers to flare because we have such different expectations. Now, all of a sudden, you're not meeting my expectations. I'm not meeting yours. And if you're not careful, that can cause some problems. Now, for example, me and Diana, we're okay when it comes to expectations, but, but we've noticed there's a few things that we were completely opposite things. on. Like... Uh, let's start with vacations. Vacations. Okay, so, so I'll give you an example. We're going to give you some examples. Okay, I'll tell you my definition of a vacation. A vacation for me means whatever, whether we're in a city, 
cruise ship, wherever we're at, a vacation for me means as soon as the sun comes up, let's go, let's go, get ready, take a shower, get ready. We're going to go see the city. We're going to go see whatever. We're going to go out and about. I'm not going to stop walking till my feet can't no more. I want to see the place that I'm at. And uh, we my got married. My expectations are a little bit different, right? His expectation is to do this every single day whenever, you know, we're on vacation, which is so great. You, you know, everybody wants to go sightsee. But vacations are for resting, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? So I want I'm to I'm noticing go, something here. I want to go sightsee, but I also want to sleep in a little bit, right? Like the, the pool is going to be there the rest of the day, right? It's not going to go away. The, the ocean is going to stay there, right? Whatever sight we're seeing, it, it's not going to move. So I think we can do both. But sometimes if I'm on vacation, I want to nap. You know, I, I want to sleep in a little bit. You know, I want to have breakfast in bed. I don't want. I just don't want to do the same things that I do all the time. Yeah, I think so I want this one though. <laughs> anybody agree with me? Anybody? Thank you. Who agrees with me? <laughs> oh, this is not. Let's call the worship team up, and uh, I think we need prayer. I've had to learn how to stay in bed. I'm telling you, it's it's a learning thing. I've had thing. to learn to wake up early. Yeah, actually, we we, we have. And hours, and hours. <laughs> We've had to compromise. I'm not the type to stay in bed. I'm up. I'm, I just as soon as I see any kind of light, let's go. It's time to go. And so we've had to learn. I think another one that uh, frustrates you a little bit: expectations. You thought I would know how to put on the toothpaste on my toothbrush, and that's by squeezing the paste from the bottom. Right. Who squeezes a toothpaste to, uh, tube from the middle? Like five people. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. It's messy. There's, there's, there's a process. There's a way to it. It's from the bottom up, so you get everything out, and it's clean, and it's neat. You're losing everything today. <laughs> So my uh, expectation is what that I he told would her is something that simple. Yeah, what I just told her is we're going to squeeze it from everywhere eventually, so it doesn't matter how it comes out. It's going to come out. And because so I'm such a great wife, I've just chosen to just compromise, and I just squeeze from the bottom, and he squeezes from the middle, and yeah, it's fine. It's all good. Just squeeze I've survived. it. survived. Okay, anyways, um, another one, for example, a, a good time for me, fun time, a relaxing time means... 50 people, 100 people at the house. We're going to relax. We're going to have a good time. Everybody come over. For hours That's me. And hours I really and enjoy hours that. And I hours. relax. I thrive in that. I feel like I'm just at ease in that. Diana, on the other hand, is like, turn on a candle. Everybody go away. I, that's how she relaxes. That's how she thrives. Well, I love people. And I love no, you parties. Do. You do. And I love hanging out. But I also like quiet time. <laughs> I give after I like have had like a interaction with people and it's been a crazy amazing day whatever we've um, enjoyed uh, movies or whatever I just want to go home and like have silence for five minutes, like I'm just an introvert so I recharge that way right like if I'm around people all the time yeah it's yeah and I'm the type like I got home I'm like babe we're gonna relax tonight uh, these people are coming over these people are coming over these people are coming over these people are, we're just gonna have a good night to relax and she she has a short circuit there but um. <laughs> I think, I think some of these are funny, but then I know we can get into a little bit more yeah. serious topics. When we first got married, Diana came from a different background, different family dynamic. Uh, so even when it comes, some of you may have experienced this, even when it comes to celebrating holidays. Yeah. Some of you come with some traditions that you celebrated with your family. And I know at you, for you, it, it was hard at the beginning now trying to make that happen. Obviously, yeah. you, you, the first couple of years of your life, you were in Colombia. Now you're here and you're raised here. And so most of your family is still over there. Yeah. How was that dynamic as you started? Yeah, I think it can happen out? to anyone, regardless of like your background, right? Everyone grows up with different traditions. You know, not every tradition is the same. You grew up with like maybe you're used to a lot of people and you're used to big celebrations. Maybe you're used to something a little bit different. So I know for us, it was a little bit difficult at first to just kind of, okay, my expectations are to do things my way, the way that I've always done it. And your expectations are to still do things your way. So how do you meet each other halfway to where we can actually be honest about our expectations and we can make realistic expectations, right? And it happens when we talk about it. I think it took us a while to, to kind of figure it out. It was a little... I think we're still trying to figure it out, yeah, to be I think, honest. Yeah. yeah, I think we're finally... 10 years later, yeah, yeah, <laughs> getting absolutely. to a place where it's like, okay, I understand, and you understand me. Yeah. And I think the beautiful thing is that is that we can be honest with each other and understand 
what does it what does it mean to you? Why, why is it so important to you? And I think Alex has been great in understanding. Maybe for me, the holidays are a little bit more difficult than for him. He prays. Um, <laughs> because my family is not here, right? Like, yeah. it's just me and my mom. So I so it, it looks a little bit different. So I think now things are, you know, it's just expectations and just talking about it. I can't expect him to understand if I've never expressed how I feel. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see, don't you see, expectations can easily complicate things. Yeah. Have you ever experienced any complications because of expectations in your relationship. Can you give us a wave? Come on across every location. You know, it can easily begin. And I think there's some healthy expectations, right? I think all of us can have healthy expectations. Well, I, I do expect to be treated fairly, loved, respected. I think we can all have healthy expectations. I think you should have healthy expectations. Whether you're single, dating, or married, have good expectations for you. But I think if we're not careful, there can also be unhealthy expectations. Uh, I think sometimes we can say, well, what I like, they should like. What I don't like, they shouldn't like. Uh, they should do things this way. And I think sometimes those unhealthy expectations were really common. And I think really the big problem today that we want to talk about is this, is that many of us, we allow past experiences to shape our future expectations. We allow past experiences to shape future expectations. Yeah, and we have all experienced different things when it comes to relationships, right? Maybe things that we have experienced ourselves or things that we have seen other people experience and go through, right? So we've seen maybe some great experiences, maybe some not so great, and those things can shape what we expect for the future, what we expect when we uh, want to enter into our relationship. And so we can begin to set expectations that are healthy or unhealthy based on what we have experienced, based on what we have seen. And so if you have been hurt, if you've been wronged, if you've been betrayed, if maybe all you've seen in your life is failure, you might begin to look at those expectations and at your future from that lens and from that perspective. And so all of a sudden you're going to have expectations, not that things can go well in a relationship, but perhaps that something bad's always going to happen. Relationships are complicated and I've seen some things, so I know everybody always messes up at some point. You know, expectations that, you know, things, things that good, they really don't last forever. Maybe some unhealthy expectations that have made you write up this list of just incredible things that someone needs to have. And they're just really unhealthy expectations because no one will ever meet every single requirement that you have. So, so nobody will ever be good enough for you because you created this list of just crazy expectations that nobody can meet. Maybe for you it's been putting very little expectations. Because perhaps you've seen things and you feel like uh, time is going by and so nobody's ever going to love me. I'm never going to have a relationship. So maybe if I lower my expectations a little bit, somebody will fall in love with me at some point. Maybe you have the expectation that there will be no issues in your relationships. Right? That nobody's going to have an argument and you're always going to be happy and it's always going to be joyful and amazing. And those are expectations that really can uh, become unhealthy or that are unhealthy. And so I wonder if you've created any unhealthy expectations based on what you've experienced. If you can go back and, and really think about uh, your own experiences in life, but perhaps your childhood. Maybe what you witnessed, your parents, your family members. Have you created any expectations that are unhealthy because of that? Because... Unhealthy expectations lead to complications in our relationship. But I really believe the same, and actually the opposite, is that healthy expectations can actually help us have healthy yeah. relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And now healthy doesn't mean perfect, right? Healthy doesn't mean everything is good all the time. Healthy expectations, it just means that they're rooted from a place of trust, from a place of love, from a place of respect, from a place of wisdom, from a place of reality. Because you may have gone through some things, but that does not equate that the reality that you're in is that. You can't uh, bring things from the past now and put it on somebody else. Those are things that we need to work on ourselves and on the things that we've uh, witnessed in the past. And so uh, what we really want to do is help each other here to create some healthy ex um, expectations. You know, and maybe we have some unhealthy ones. How do we go back and how do we revise those things and live with healthy expectations in life? Absolutely. I hope all of us, we're really leaning in. I, I don't know where you're at, what location you're at. I don't know where you're watching. But I want all of us to lean in, lean in. Because I think it's easy to talk about subjects of faith, miracles, all that, and believe God for a bunch of things. But I think a lot of us, if we're not careful, we're so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good. And I think a lot of Christians, we can easily be blamed for that. 
And I think rightly so. I've seen it. I grew up in church, and I've seen people that are extremely spiritual in church, but their relationship, their marriages are falling apart. And so I've seen men of God come into church and act all spiritual, sit in the front row, nice tie, nice suit, but then go home and mistreat their wife. You know the Bible well. You can quote it well. But how are you treating those around you? How are you treating your kids? How are you treating your family? I see women of God come in church and want to prophesy and do amazing but show no respect to their husbands. And so I think faith shouldn't just be a singular thing. It should affect every area of our life. And so we think it's important to talk about relationships. And so we're really excited about it. Today we're going to give you just five quick thoughts. We wanted to have more of a conversation today, more than a preaching. Let's talk about this because all of us, whether you're single, dating, or married, you're in some kind of relationships. How do we treat one another? What, what are our expectations? How come they're getting complicated? I think today is a big one as we talk about goals. And so five quick thoughts on our relationships and expectations. We'll start with number one. Number one across every location. Are you ready? Say yes. <laughs> you can't say, no, I got the mic. I'm going to do it anyways. All right. Number one, I think the first thing about expectations, number one, is that they need to be realistic. They should be realistic. I think our expectations should be realistic. I think if we're not careful, we live in a society and in a culture that wants to give you this romanticized idea about relationships. I hear it all the time. We got single friends and we got people that either been married or now divorced and are looking for a new relationship. And, and, and we've done counseling for couples and sat down with people with premarital. And they have these false ideas about what a relationship look, should look like, about what a husband should look like, about what a wife should look like. I can't wait. Oh, my God, I can't wait. <laughs> We're never going to fight. We're never going to have an argument. And it's like, where did you pick the, this idea? I think it's movies, it's cultures, it's TV shows that start to shape our mind. And all of a sudden we get to adulthood and we, we think that, wait, is there any arguing here? Like why? We're having problems in our marriage because we disagree. Yeah, you're going to disagree about a whole lot of things. How do you continue to love somebody, be kind and compassionate, and clothe yourself with love even when you disagree? Even when you don't see things the same, do you have expectations that are unrealistic? They should be realistic. I think what we need to realize is that all of us are humans. Can I get an amen? amen. If you don't know this today, I'm going to let you know, you are a human. <laughs> and humans all fail. And I think so often what we do is that we look at the other person and we start to criticize and we start to look with a critical eye, look at where they fail, look at where they come short. I can't believe they did this. I can't believe they really think that I should squeeze the toothpaste out of the bottom when I do it from the middle. I can't believe she loves to nap on trips. I can't believe we have these family dynamics. I can't believe she acted this way. And if you're not careful, you're, you're constantly just pointing in one direction at blame and fault. Because you put these unrealistic expectations on the other person. Well, this person should come and meet my needs. This person should come and tell. Can I tell you, perfection does not exist. All my single people, one more time, make some noise. Yeah, I've sat down with some single people who say, I'm waiting for this guy, and this is how I want him. I want him to be 6'4". I don't want a six-pack. I want an eight-pack. And uh, he should have light blue eyes. And he should know the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, every verse memorized, preach like T.D. Jakes. He um, needs to just, you know, be a man of God. And, and you just start listing all these things. That is, is that real? Yeah, I just want a 10. You want a 10, but you're looking like a 4. Can we be real today? Come on. I think a lot of people just have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. Right? And then people are like, I, I just don't want no problems in my relationship. Problems happen. How do you navigate those problems when you're, once you're in it is what we need to figure out, right? And so what are your expectations? Well, I want her to be like this, and I want her to be like this. And I've heard guys, too, guys who want models, and they're not looking like a model themselves. Very opposite of a model. <laughs> right? Like, look in the mirror first and, and see what you can work with. <laughs> right? And then in marriage, like, Oh, I just, I have these expectations. My wife should do this. And my wife needs to be like this. Where, where are those expectations coming from? Like Diana said, are they coming from an un unhealthy place? 
maybe by things that we saw growing up, maybe things that we saw in our home, maybe things that we saw in the relationship in our parents, whether it was a broken home or a home that was together. Uh, she came from a broken home. I came from a home where my parents are still together. But just because my parents did things a certain way doesn't mean we should do them a certain way. And just because her parents were to certain route doesn't mean we're going to go that route as well. And so it's both of us coming and saying, hey, let's be realistic about each other's goals. I'm talking about that. That is for everything, emotional, spiritual. In, in, in your sexual relationship, be careful that what you experience in your past is not now determining what your future should look like. Make sure you have realistic goals. And I think we need to have healthy ones. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, but I think our expectations uh, also need to be expressed, right? Okay. Because the things that we don't express, we begin to assume. That's right. I heard someone saying that about 80% of our expectations are assumed, never really said, yeah. never really shared with someone. And so assuming something, it's like working with kind of half of the reality and leaving the other half uh, up to the imagination. Right. And you can fill that gap really with anything. You can fill that gap with your hurts, with your pain, with your trauma. You can feel, uh, fill that gap with assumptions that might not be reality, right? Because sometimes our emotions and our opinions are not, are not reality, right? And so the importance of expressing our expectations really can bring clarity to our relationship. If we don't express it, then we're never going to get clarity on it. And so I think that sometimes we need to... Uh, Remove this thinking that, oh, he should know yeah. or she should know. Yeah. Remove this idea of like, well, I dropped a hint once and so they should have picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I wasn't listening. Yeah. It's not that I didn't mean to. Maybe it's, well, I said it while we were dating and now we're 10 years married and this person's still not doing this that I expected them to do. It's this mentality that, hey, if we have an expectation, let's talk about it. Yeah, right. If we have an expectation, let's be clear about it, yeah, right. right? And as a couple, it requires both of us. It requires vulnerability on one end to say, hey, this is how I feel and this yeah. is what I need and this is what I'm looking for. And it requires the other person to have compassion and kindness to listen and understand where you're coming from. And this will only... Um, allow us to create healthier relationships where we get to be honest with each other. So expressing can only bring clarity because if you keep assuming, you're, you're eventually going to get bitter, right? right yeah, if you right, keep right. assuming certain things, if you keep emotions to yourself, they're going to lead you to disappointment. Yeah. If I never tell Alex or if I would have never told Alex that I don't like getting flowers, I would have been disappointed time and time again during the year when my birthday comes and Valentine's Day and I'm going to keep getting flowers and I'm just here like, you should have known better. You should have read my mind at some point, right? It's silly, but I know that there are bigger examples in our own lives that sometimes we say, well, he should know. They, they know me. They should, they should know this about me. Well, should they? Do they? There's nothing wrong with actually expressing ourselves, right? So... I wonder if we can just take a moment to think about that ourselves. Are we, or have we expressed our expectations? If you're married, if you're dating, if you're single, be ready to express those expectations. Healthy expectations. Once you understand that they're realistic, hey, share them from the beginning, right? Don't expect the other person to read your mind. Don't expect the other person to simply just come up with whatever you're expecting. And, and I think just sharing and having clarity and communication can bring a lot of healing and health to our relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I think number one, we need to make sure they're realistic. Number two, they should be expressed. Number three, I think that our expectations, they require compromise. Yeah. They require compromise. This is a big one for a lot of us in relationships. If you're single, you need to learn how to compromise now before you get into a relationship because it will help you in the long run. Right, compromise is extremely important. I think the more you learn how to compromise, the more those unrealistic expectations will become realistic. Because now you're working on compromise. I think what you need to do is maybe sit down with the person that you are either dating or in a relationship with, want to be in a relationship with, or maybe you're married and you could be 10 years married, 20 years married, 30 years married, and you can, you can still see that some of these things are causing friction in our relationship. Let's talk about these things. Let's, let's sit down and figure it out. If we're not careful, we're living in a fast-paced world. We're busy working and busy doing a million things, and our marriage is suffering because we don't take time to talk. And so I think we need to sit down and have a conversation, right? Like Diana just said, we're, we're 10 years into this thing, and we're still trying to figure out some things. And it wasn't until this past year where we had some really good, healthy conversations about family dynamics. I think that's okay. In fact, I think all of us should learn how to do this. Yeah. So number one, identify those things in your marriage where you're saying, hey, 
These are the expectations I have. This is what's happening. What are your expectations? Let's talk about them. Number two, don't just identify, but number two, listen. Somebody say listen. Amen. Marriage is going gonna, is gonna to test you in your listening skills. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Some of you didn't say amen because you didn't listen. But, but marriage requires us, a lot of us are really good talkers and really bad listeners. And we think that because we talk a lot, it makes us good listeners. Yeah, I, I do know how to communicate. I said what I felt. That's not communication. Communication also requires listening. Yeah. It's part of communication. Communication is not just verbally us spewing out our ideas, our thoughts, our expectations. Communication is also taking time to listen and really be concerned about what the other person is saying. And I think many times what happens in relationships, and again, whether you're dating or whether you're married 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years in, our communication has gone bad. Communication is one of the top reasons, top three reasons why people end up in divorce. And so if we don't communicate, we'll never end up in compromise. What is this person saying? What are their expectations? Am I meeting them? Can I sit down and really, really have a conversation and say, hey, what are your expectations about me? How can I, how can I, how can I do this? Compromise is meeting each other halfway. And can we be honest? Sometimes it won't be 50-50. Sometimes compromise means I'll, I'll give in a little bit more to make my spouse happy, to make the person that I'm with happy and, and so that I can help them. It's dying to self. Marriage will test you. I'm a Christian. I carry the cross. I'll die to myself. Really? Get married and see. Let 10 years go, 20 years go. You'll see. Ask those that have been married 50 years. I know the hands went up back there. It's a whole lot of dying to yourself for 50 years. It's dying of the ego. Yeah. Saying it's not about me. It's now about us. The two shall become one flesh. It's one flesh, but you still want your way. It's one flesh, but you still want it the way you had it always. That's not compromise. And so I may need to go in 70. She may need to go in 80. 60. Like, it, compromise is meeting more than halfway sometimes. And I think if we want our relationships to have less complications, they require compromise. Am I compromising? Let, let what matters to you matter to me. And I think that will lead to healthy relationships. Yeah, and number four, our expectations should not be rooted in fear. Because fear can be the underlying issue of some of our expectations and some of our behavior, right? Some of our expectations have come from, from a place of fear. Fear of being in a situation that we have been in the past. Fear of being in a situation that our parents were in at some point. Fear of being in a situation that we've seen somebody else go through. And so we begin to put these expectations um, that are just rooted and based in fear. And the thing about fear is that fear doesn't really think clearly. And fear, looking, looking at, a, at an event, at a circumstance, through the eyes of fear, it's almost like looking at it through a magnifying glass. Yeah, right, right. Some things really look bigger than they really are, right? It's not a clear vision. Uh, fear can make us or paralyze us or can make us act in ways that we are not really thinking about. We just go with it, yeah. right? Or, or we don't do anything because we're afraid. And so many times we can set expectations so high, so unrealistic that... We don't allow anyone to get close to us out of fear of being hurt, out of fear of letting someone in, out of so fear true. of being yeah. vulnerable with yeah. somebody, right? Sometimes we, we put no expectations whatsoever because we have fear of being rejected. So we accommodate our expectations to what somebody else can or wants to give us because we have fear that if maybe we ask for a little bit more, then they're going to walk away and we're going to be alone. Right, some expectations rooted in fear that can make you say no to great people because you're not perfect people. And so you're looking for flaws everywhere because you think you need this perfect person that you're never going to find expectations that can be rooted in fear. And I love this verse in 1 John chapter 4. It says that there's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And I'm not talking about the kind of love that it's a romantic relationship love. It's not the love of Alex that drives out fear in me. It's the love of God that can drive, yeah, drive out fear in my life, right? And so I love this because when you are in God's will, whether you're single, you're married, you're in a relationship, you're dating, if, if you are in God's will, if you bring your, your concerns, your heart, your issues to God, 
and you know that God is leading you and you allow him to lead you, if you find yourself in a situation of fear but it's a God thing, God can turn your fear into trust. And I, and I love this verse because I really believe that I've seen that true in my life. I feel like because of the way that I grew up, I put very unhealthy expectations that were rooted in fear for my future. Right, I saw a, a marriage that was broken. My father who abandoned us, who always um, cheated on my mom. I saw some of the dynamics in my aunts, my uncles, and I always kind of knew that's not what I wanted for my life. And what I saw wasn't always healthy and wasn't always ideal. And so out of fear of ever being in that situation, I put certain expectations in my life that would not just allow anybody to get close to me. Expectations that told me, hey, things are not going to be good. At some point, they're going to be bad, really bad. Expectations that told me you, keep, you don't expect for things to last forever because at some point, everything crumbles and falls apart. So what expectations have you rooted in fear? But I love that God has a way to turn our fear into trust. Right, that at the perfect time, uh, growing up as someone who did not just dream about getting married and white dresses, that when I met Alex and I was in God's will, and I knew that our relationship was a God thing, that God can turn my fear of the future into trust. Not trust in a person, but trust in who he is. Not trust that Alex is not going to fail, not trust that our relationship is going to be perfect, but trust in the God that's leading me. Trust in the God that... Well, everything or everyone else might fail me, that God never fails me. So I think the beautiful thing about God turning our fear into trust is that it will allow us to experience the beauty of love. The beauty of being vulnerable. And I think sometimes we need to risk that. Take a risk. I was talking about that this way. Take a risk. Because if you don't take a risk to trust God in your life, you're always going to live for the rest of your life with this fear hanging over your head. That you might just be into, in a relationship, but you're just halfway. Because half of you believes and half of you doubts. If it's a God thing, allow God to change your fear and turn it into trust. Trust that allows you to experience the fullness of love. And trust that allows you to trust him that regardless of what happens in your future, he's got you and he is good. So I just encourage you to look inside and ask yourself, do I have any expectations that are rooted in my fear? And can I allow God to heal those areas of my life that are still broken, that are still in pain that are still trying to heal. And I believe that he will be faithful to do that for us. Absolutely. Relationships are important because they affect everything else in our lives. I've seen people with the calling of God over their lives. I've seen people in church on Dream Team ready to go full steam ahead. But because we didn't go back and work on our relationship issues, it affected everything else. And I think God wants us to have healthy relationships. So I hope this is helping people. Number one, our expectations should be realistic. Number two, we should really express them. Number three, they require compromise. Number four, don't let them be rooted in fear. And we'll finish with this. We got to go. Number five, um, they require grace. Our expectations require grace. I think it's easy to look at the person that we're dating or the person that we've been married to after a couple years or after a long time, and begin to see all of their flaws and all of their faults without you ever looking at your own. And I think if we're honest, today all of us, we can say, hey, we all fall short of God's glory. We all fall short of God's standard. And if God has been graceful and merciful to me, then how am I not going to extend this grace and this mercy to the people around me, especially to the partner that God has given me to run after him, to love him, to go and carry our purpose together? That same grace that's been extended to me, I should extend it to my partner. I should extend it to my spouse, my wife, my husband. And I think of many times a lot of us, we have grace for a lot of things except our relationships. We have grace for a lot of things. In fact, some of us, we show more grace to the people that are involved in our life and less to the people that we're attached to and married to. It's easier to extend grace to a friend than it is to a spouse because it's the person that we love the most and they hurt us the most. But God, knowing that we would hurt him the most, still, still gave us the most grace. I love what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, Paul writes, forgiving each other 
just as in Christ, God forgave you. Today, me and Dan, I really just want healthy relationships all across our church. We desire our relationship to be healthier. We want to get stronger every single day, every single year. And our prayer is that all of us, whether you're single, dating, or married, there will be grace in your relationship. There will be forgiveness in your relationship. And that the devil or the enemy wouldn't come in and try to destroy homes, try to destroy marriages, try to destroy what God is building in your life. Today, am I showing grace? God, have I shown grace? The beautiful thing about grace, you know, what I love is that grace, grace prays for one another. When's the last time you prayed for that person you're with? That's something me and Dana have put into practice the last couple of years. And we're trying. We're far from perfect. I'm not sitting up here telling you every day we pray for one another. No, but we've tried to put it into practice. And we're doing it more than usual because you should pray for the person you're with. That's grace. And, hey, let me hold your hands. Let me pray for you. I know that the, remember what Jesus says. That it's easier to look at the speck at somebody else's eye than the very log that's in your own eye. In my relationship, in my marriage, or in the person I'm dating with, and all my expectations, am I looking at the speck before taking off the log out of my own eye? My marriage should be full of grace because it's a beautiful example and it's a symbolic representation of the union that God has with us. In fact, that's what marriage reflects. Our marriage reflects God's grace, God's love, and God's commitment to humanity. To me, God has been good to me. Has God been good to you? Come on, somebody. Anybody grateful? And I think the same way he loves us is how we should love one another. And I pray that today the healing would happen. Maybe you've been married for five years, 10 years, 15, 35, 40, 50 years. And you say, you know what? There's been a lot of friction, a lot of problems, a lot of complications. Maybe my expectations have just been unrealistic. I haven't compromised. Maybe they've been rooted in fear. Maybe they haven't had grace. Today, I'm really praying that God would come healing places of our hearts and our relationships. Across every location, I want us to close our eyes, bow our head. In fact, why don't we stand up to our feet?